I mean, it. yeah, that's the, I don't I don't have any qualm with that. I think the biggest thing is like I was really only put a target on me if people think that's what you got to do. But everyone's playing this game too passive. Yeah, just gonna go with the big brothers. Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Lex and I would absolutely love it if you love this content, if you love Big Brother. If you've been watching the recaps, you know, if you've been clicking on the recaps, if you've been watching my live feed recaps every day, because I know some of y'all ain't hitting that subscribe, I would love it if you could please hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel. It really helps me to grow and it just lets me know that you guys actually enjoy these videos. Now, First off, before we begin, uh, I have remade my Twitter account. So if you're interested in more reality TV mess, chats, whatever, you can follow me here on Twitter. I'll put it on screen. There will also be a link in the bottom bar. Now, let's get into it. This was an eventful day. Okay, there was a lot that happened. So I'm going to try to make this as concise as possible for you guys. There is a lot, like seriously, a lot to talk about. A lot of different things happened. The house was blown up. Tucker vs. Cedric, like it's really crazy. So we're just going to get into it from the beginning, okay? And we will see here. So day 21, we start off the day when they wake up, we see a conversation between Tucker, Cedric, and Kenny. Now, Tucker at this point does not want him to do the move. Tucker. Cedric is like, look, we don't have the votes. Please don't do it. Like, and Tucker does not want to hear that. Tucker is like, I don't give an F. I'm still going to do it anyways. I don't give an F about the votes. When Cedric straight up tells him, look, we don't have it. Like this plan is not going to work. Keep this in mind because this is going to come up later. It is very critical. So in either event, Cedric tells Kenny that people also want him out because he's complaining about not wanting to be in the house. You know, people are starting to get irritated that he's constantly saying, hey, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. So you need to win the AI arena. And at this point, it's not clear to me like where anyone's true allegiances lie because Cedric is giving information to Kenny. He's acting like he's with Tucker and Kenny, but then obviously he's also with the collective. So I don't know. Tucker at this point, he is very irritated saying people are playing too passive. He gets really mad. <sighs> boy, oh boy. t -Core, Chelsea, and Leah also have a conversation. Oh, then you can come and confront me, but you're literally confronting me about shit that everybody is speculating. Everybody's <laughs> I was like, aw, you had your first rumors read about you? Welcome to Big Brother. Welcome to Big yeah. And Leah is saying that Cam, she's just basically recapping the conversation that she had with Cam the previous night, claiming that Cam was pinning the All Girls Alliance on her, saying that she started the alliance. And of course, Leah's like, I don't understand why. I don't know why this is happening. Um, she never did that. She's not happy that Cam is accusing her. Her and Cam are not on good terms. Also keep that in mind because they have a secondary argument later. So the collective has a meeting. And if you've forgotten who is part of the collective, it is Cedric, Brooklyn, Quinn, Chelsea, and Cam. Free agent. And it's like, oh, okay. that's awesome. Man. <laughs> Thanks. He was talking to me post like me about to throw up <laughs> from like being right. lightheaded. And so um, and they are, Cedric basically has called this meeting because he wants to spill the beans and expose this plan that Tucker has had against Quinn. Yeah, because he wouldn't have even proposed the idea if he didn't think it was going to go anywhere. Crazy. Yeah. That's interesting. Has he gone to anybody else to try to sway, or was he going to do that after you renom Quinn? No, he after wanted I me to Quinn. do it. Like, he wanted me to swing Leah. Like, he wanted me to, like... Tucker was gonna try to swing Joseph type bug and get after the Reno. After the Reno. Like that's only two people. And then it So, so uh, Cedric starts. He starts discussing the plan. Now Quinn is telling um Quinn is spilling to the girls of the collective about Kenny's idea to take down the 
women's alliance with their own version of a men's alliance. And of course, the girls are like, what? Like, what is going on? And Quinn definitely is, makes it seem like he was not in on it in the first place. He has, I will say, came back to the collective and told them a lot of things. So it's seeming like that's where Quinn's loyalty is. I'm assuming because it's the majority alliance at this point. I think he he seems like that's where he's sticking. But you never really know with a lot of these people. Now, Cedric tells Brooklyn and Quinn that MJ is definitely going up at this point. Once again, it, it's just clear he's not doing Tucker's plan. He doesn't feel like he has the votes. And I mean, for Cedric, it probably just logically doesn't make sense because it's one of his alliance members. Cedric reassures them that he 100% lies with the collective because remember Tucker and Kenny have been trying to bring him into some all male alliance. Now the group does ask, well, what is the actual plan? You know, if you're not putting up Quinn and he says that, you know, he was never going with Tucker's plan. He feels that Kenny is actually a bigger threat to go home and he still would like to get Angela out at some point, but Ange, Ange has, has slowly slid to the back. You know, I told y'all, just wait on it because these people, the way they move, I knew that if Angela didn't get out, like maybe last week, that she was probably going to be able to slide back into people's good graces. Because Angela, I'll give her for what it's worth. Angela has been quiet. She has not opened that mouth. She sits on the side and just smiles and laughs. Every now and then we see Angela have an argument. Okay, she had one or later on in this video. But for the most part, Angela has recognized, look, I'm not on people's good graces. So I'm just going to sit to the side, be quiet and smile and laugh. And you know what? At some point or another, people will probably realize I don't have alliances. I don't have anything. And I think that is the case. Now, Quinn is curious if he can trust Rubina because she is close with Tucker. And at this point, Kate, uh, Cedric says, look, I would not trust anybody who's not in the collective period. And he says that to a few people throughout the day. Trust the collective, trust the collective. The collective is number one. So Quinn clocks Kenny as a cop yet again. He says, I knew it. Cops never like me. And I was like, what that mean though? <laughs> um, now they are talking about putting MJ up and the risks of that. Uh, Cedric says he really wants to reassure MJ that this is not a back door, that, you know, this is all part of the plan. Brooklyn says that MJ said that as long as the power is not mentioned in the speech to put her up, that she's not going to use it. Now, MJ wants an alliance. Uh, also, Brooklyn spills that MJ wants an alliance with the guys because she claims that she's athletic like them. And they all sit there and cackle and laugh. Chelsea's like, girl, you played volleyball. Um, I gotta say, you know, the I'm a girl that's different thing is, I don't know. I don't know, MJ, but okay. Um, Brooklyn says that Leah also wants an alliance with some of the guys and the girls as well. So they're both kind of just like, uh, MJ and Leah, we don't know about them. <laughs> uh, but they do all agree that they need to start winning comps. Cedric says this again throughout the day that the days of, you know, throwing comps or not winning is over at this point. It's ride or die because if they are not in power, they're probably going to go up from the other side. Uh, and then Chelsea says that one of them, t -Cor or Joseph, has to get HOH because they're all trustworthy. Essentially, they just really don't want Tucker and Kenny and, and probably Angela to get HOH. Now, they do say that t -Cor, well, Chelsea says that t -Cor is very smart. She has opportunities to win HOHs. She's good at mental comps, but she's probably not trying to win right now, which for her game, I think is good. Like, why would T-Core put herself in the line of fire? She's sitting in a really good spot, I think. So Quinn also reveals that he formed a fake final two with Rubina, so she wouldn't be closer to Tucker. And remember, we had the alliance counter yesterday, okay? He made like three alliances. Just yesterday alone, he made like three new alliances. Now, Tucker and Rubina are talking and- Under pressure. I know. God. We know. I know. We know. And I do do better under pressure, so. No, I was originally thinking of taking Kenny off, but Kenny's like, yo, he wants to battle. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, look, I know it's this safe move to do. 
Bina is trying to convince Tucker to use the veto on himself. Nobody is is buying this like plan that he wants to do. Everyone's just like, bro, just use it on yourself. Like it's not, it's not going anywhere. Like, you know, uh, Kenny and Cedric are also talking and Cedric tells Kenny that he does think Tucker's plan is the best move, but as of right now, it goes against the house. So it's not going to happen. I think that people, even though it's the best game move, I don't think people play logically in this game. Yeah. And that's why. Well, the problem is that sometimes people play way too safe. And yeah. they're playing safe for themselves. They're not playing safe for the house. Mm -hmm. No one here is playing safe for the house. Mm -hmm. No one's playing safe for themselves. Thinking yeah. like, oh, if we can, this is the. Uh, Angela is the primary target for Cedric, apparently. That's what he tells Kenny anyway. But Kenny says, look, I'm not putting Angela up if I get HOH next week. Y'all had all this time to get her out and you continue to try to get out other targets. I'm not doing the dirty work. And you know what? A broken clock is right twice a day because I agree with Kenny. First off, I don't even, I think it's a waste of an HOH to get out Angela. I say it every single video. But second of all, exactly. If y'all wanted her out so bad, you had the opportunity and instead you've left her in the house week after week. So in this point, stop going after Angela. Now, Cedric is running through the possible plans again of what will happen during the nominations. You know, it, they're wondering if what, to, what will happen if Tucker takes himself down. But overall, they both do agree that it is not necessary for Tucker to do this plan because they simply don't have the votes. So, T Kimo, Tikor, and Rubina, they just have a little conversation in the bathroom, and they're basically just solidifying that they're all okay with each other, they all trust each other, nothing much there. Feeds go down for about an hour and a half, and we come back, and we actually get a little snippet of the veto ceremony. <laughs> Why, why, why wouldn't you want to take out the biggest threats early on so you can coast through the rest of the game and be comfortable when it comes down to the final people? That's what I'm saying. Everybody deserves to be Out of respect. Here. I think you're one of the best players. If I was stuck in the house you with you towards the end, player. I would be nervous. I'd be like, damn, I wish I got him out earlier. <laughs> oh, boy. So we come back and Tucker is talking with the house. We quickly find out that Tucker did take himself off and the new nominee, or take off Angela. I'm sorry. Tucker took off Angela and he was expecting the plan to go through, but instead the replacement nom was MJ. And MJ did deploy America's veto. So that is kind of where we are at after the veto ceremony. There is chaos things are blown up tucker is pissed a lot of alliances have been destroyed powers were revealed uh during the ceremony quinn's power was revealed it was revealed that chemo was the one who originally told tucker about the power and baby alliances are all over the place people are scrambling now we come into the kitchen and angela and quinn are also fighting that's your best on a strategic level. Bullshit! You already did that when Bullshit. Kenny, when Kenny Bullshit. came out here to put her on the block, you're like, t -Core went in there to talk to me. Why would she volunteer to go on the block? Oh, you went up there. It was not part of the plan. It's I saw, okay. I saw Brooklyn was worried. I was like, Brooklyn, it's you're not part of the plan at all. Oh, no, no, she, I mean, You know, Skippy, he, be, he chops the camera off every time Angela's in a fight, but they are also in the kitchen fighting about something. We come back to chaos. We come back to absolute chaos. Kenny, Leah, and Joseph are talking outside, and they are talking about how it was crazy for Quinn to try to accuse others of having the power when he had the power himself. And again, I agree. I think Quinn's gameplay to hide this power and try to kind of spin away from it, to me, did not make sense. Okay? Now, Kenny tries to say that Quinn was happy about joining an alliance with him and Tucker. And, you know, Tucker was like, wait, but like, you're already in an alliance with me. So they're trying to talk about how Quinn was two-timing all types of people, pretending that he didn't already have other alliances in the belt. And, you know, just how Quinn got called out for his repeated number of alliances during this conversation or during the veto meeting. 
Now, Cedric tells Tikor, Kimo, and Cam that it's agreed that whoever goes up with MJ's power, it is unfair to send them home. And he says he will try to protect them with the collective. And both Cedric and Joseph were saying this all day, that whoever America's nominee is, is definitely not going to go home. That's not fair. Let's all band together and say we're not going to send that person home. I'm just going to say we're going to wait and see because I think it's very much going to depend on who it is. Because I have a, I don't know. Part of me thinks if it's Quinn that goes up, they will vote him out. Okay? I'm just being honest. Now, Leah asks Kenny about this girl's alliance, where he heard about it from. Kenny tries to deny that he ever said there was a girl's alliance. He claims he asked about it, but he never said there was one. <laughs> um... And he also tells Leah, you're crazy if you think that the girls aren't bonding together in this house. They go upstairs for like two hours and, and talk. And what do you think they're doing up there? I'm like, Kenny. Ugh. Okay. Now, Cedric versus Tucker. Cedric versus Tucker. Round one. Because they have a few rounds. Okay. Now, Cedric tells Cam that you don't have to lie and scheme to play this game. Or Tucker, sorry. Tucker says you don't have to lie and scheme to play this game. He says he wants to play the game with morals, with integrity, with all of these different things. He calls Cedric a scumbag and says that Cedric is nothing to him. Now, Tucker tries to even form something with Cam. He's like, you know, we got to form something, bro. Because, like, you know, Cam irritated me, by the way. Cam irritates me. Y'all put Cam up as America's nominee. <laughs> Seriously, put Cam up. Um, but Tucker's whispering him, like, we got to form something, bro. Like, it's, it's crazy over here. So. So Quinn, Tikor, and Joseph are also talking. Quinn goes on basically an apology tour throughout the whole house. He apologizes to his alliances as a whole, the collective particularly. He apologizes to each person individually. And seemingly people understand, at least they told Quinn to his face, look, we understand why you did it. Now, do I believe it 100%? Probably not, but I don't think anybody wants to rock the boat. So Quinn is explaining how he told Angela and Chemo about the power because Angela was HOH and Chemo was on the block at the time and he wanted to just try to be close with him and connect to him. He does admit that he lied to everyone else's face. And when you watch t in these conversations, I felt very bad for her. She looked so upset throughout the whole day. I mean, Chemo particularly was her biggest ally. And I think to hear that Chemo was the one that started the whole thing about the power, I just think that was very hard for, for T-Core to internalize. And when your biggest allies have a big secret and no one told you, I, I just think that it felt like a betrayal for her. So you could definitely see on her face, she did not look happy throughout the day. She looked very, very, very sad. Um, Quinn does also discuss the race situation that we saw on the show a few days ago. And he tells Secor that Angela was the one that was trying to make it seem like he made it about race, but he didn't actually mean to make it about race. And I was surprised they left this on the feeds. Um, no real comment there. I already did a whole video on my take on that if you want to look at it. But Quinn is just doing his rounds. He's just making his apology tour. Um, Cedric and MJ also talk and, you know, MJ was in the HOH for quite a while trying to understand in this conversation, MJ says, look, I like competing. I would have wanted to be able to compete. I just was not sure about this whole thing because right now I'm a floater. That's what she says out loud. She said, I'm not sure if I had the numbers. Um, but MJ spent a lot of time in the HOH, just kind of confused. Leah and Cam, they have another fight. And you guys know both of these two are babbling buffoons. I'm sorry. They both talk and talk and talk and talk. And it is very hard to even decipher what they're fighting about. But it was that, not And true. acting like I made up a rumor when I did not. Because I did When it's something that you actually I, agreed to. When I... So it's even worse than what I was telling you. No, it's because I thought that you created the rumor. And I thought... So... Basically, Leah is upset because Cam's alliances were apparently brought up during the veto meeting, and he had told her that he was in no alliances. And Leah's like, okay, but two of your alliances <laughs> were brought up during the meeting. He says, 
he's in no alliance because clearly the plan that was supposed to happen, aka Tucker's plan, did not happen. So that is supposed to prove that he is in no alliances. Now, she also confronts him about accusing her of starting rumors about like a girls alliance and different things like that. Leah claims she's just an observer in the house and she pays attention to everything, you know. Um, but they fight on and on and on for a very long time. They were on the feeds fighting back and forth. Don't think they came to a resolution. Don't think they ever will. Um, Tucker and Kenny. They're sitting at the kitchen table, still discussing a girl's alliance. They are literally sitting here like, oh, when the I mean, everyone thinks you girls are doing something up there because girls do powwow. And you are the mother figure of all those girls. So, yeah. if you're not doing something, chill out with that. So what more do you girls have to talk about in fucking three weeks in here? girls go upstairs it's obviously clear what they're doing and i'm like wow imagine being so paranoid about an alliance that does not exist <laughs> um but they are also trying to predict who america will put up with the america's vote they're discussing how quinn brought up one season where a power was used and he did not like you know and that was his reasoning for not using it and kenny is trying you know trying to act like he is super fan talking about something that happened once usually people use a power if they get it I'm like, kenny you're not a super fan like relax um anyway at some point of the night uh tucker and cedric have round two so Tucker confronts Cedric about blindsiding him. This whole narrative that Tucker has is that he was blindsided by Cedric. Cedric was aware that he was going to do this and he had agreed to it. And Cedric's take is, no, I literally told you, we do not have the votes. Do not use the power. Which we can hash it out right now. Yeah. Did. So Cedric, why are you telling people I'm a liar? What I tell them? You want to tell me or do you want me to say it? Because I know what you're telling everybody. The word's getting back to me real quick. Yeah, what What did I say? I'll, t I'll tell you what they told me when they came up to me. No, I want to know what you're telling them about me. Nothing. I told him. It's true. There are clips out there. Like, he literally told him, we don't have the votes. Do not use the power. Blah, 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 blah. And so Tucker is super upset saying, you knew what you were doing. You're spreading lies that you didn't know about this. And it just goes back and forth and back and forth. You know, obviously, ultimately, by the end of the argument, Tucker does say, Cedric's my number one target. I'm gonna get you. And Cedric's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> Tigor and Kimo also end up talking at some point during the night they're like on good terms they did have very awkward energy for a little while and at one point Tigor, Tigor had told Chelsea like I can't even look at him because Again, he knew this and he didn't say anything to me. Um, but Tigor does say that she needs to go back to the drawing board with Kimo because clearly a lot of the people she thought she could trust, she cannot trust. And Quinn also has a meeting with the collective minus Tigor, Chelsea, and Kimo. So the collective is like basically solidified. Like the eight is solidified at this point because of Tucker. Um, now, Quinn once again, apologizes for everything. He does say whoever is the HOH, you know, he will take over the HOH and end up putting up Angela Tucker or Kenny so he can get the blood on his hands. He repeatedly tells them he's loyal to them. This is where his loyalty lies. The same stuff he's been saying. Uh, as I said, I think because it's the majority alliance, he just feels the most comfortable sticking with them. Okay. That is like the big conversations, but we do have some things of notes. First off, Tucker and Rubina solidify their showmans. Um, you know, Rubina does have a what are we conversation and they kind of get around it by, and they say like, we're in a showmans. I don't know. Quinn and Cedric are good. 
they seem to have no beef, no drama. They have talked a few times throughout the night. Seemingly both understand each other's point of view. Uh, Tucker, at one point, apparently mentioned that Quinn was making Angela crazy during his HOH, or not during the HOH, during the veto. I just thought that was funny. Quinn tells Chelsea and Brooklyn that he still doesn't want Tucker to go home if it's him versus Kenny. And they're like, really? Would you want to like, really? And he's like, well, I don't think he wants to work with me, but I don't know. So that was weird. Um, Angela does end up apologizing for Quinn for yelling at him in the kitchen about whatever argument they were having. Uh, Cedric lets Cam know they're still rocking with him, and he also tells him to let people know that he is fully done with Leah and that he's with the collective. Uh, Quinn tells Joseph about the Pentagon. Joseph also tells Quinn to throw the HOH, then use the deep fake so everyone in the collective is eligible for HOH, and he does end up telling them, yeah, we're doing this plan uh, to the collective. He tells everyone. Now, Tucker told multiple people that Cedric is a liar about the fact that he was supposed to use a veto. We already discussed that in their drama. And lastly, Tucker says that America would put Leah up because she's used four derogatory terms in the house, two of which have been called out by others. Yeah, or clean up. Because Leah has said, like, four derogatory terms, and they do not let that shit slide. But they might not even have seen it. Even if you're live. Yeah. I don't know. The live players are hard. I don't know. I don't know. She's, she, get, she got called out on two of them, and that was a big discussion, so. I should have stayed in that room. I should have. And we don't know the derogatory terms. Um, clearly, this was during some of those feed cuts. CBS, CBS. <laughs> okay, so that is where we are at in the house. A lot happened. Alliances are blown up. I will say coming out of the night, the one thing that seems solid is the eight person collected. But other than that, it's anybody's game. Anyway, if you made it to this point, I would absolutely love it if you would help me to drum up an engagement on the videos by liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. Share these videos with your friends, family, whoever, your puppy, I don't care. Whoever in your life watches Big Brother, share these videos with them so they can get out further. Also, if you have not hit subscribe yet, if you're coming to the channel, if you're seeing my recaps every day and you still have not decided, hey, let me take that plunge to subscribe. Why don't you consider today being that day? We are on the road to 1,000 subscribers, y'all. I am less than 300 subscribers away from 1,000. So that it would be awesome if I could reach 1,000 by the end of this season of Big Brother. I think it is very attainable and possible. I've already gained over 150 subscribers for my little channel. That's amazing. So please, please, please help me and support me by liking, sharing, commenting, and hitting subscribe. Hit the bell and make sure you're still subscribed because I've had a few of you comment to me that um, you subscribed to me and then you were not subscribed anymore. And YouTube does that. It does it to me too. I literally will go back to people and I'm like, I know I hit that subscribe button. <laughs> I've been subscribed to this person for years and now I'm not subscribed anymore. So definitely make sure that YouTube didn't unsubscribe you. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Anyways, without further ado, we will talk in the next video. Bye. I'm tired of these people, y'all.